Hello there, my name is Adam Knight. I'm a preacher, teacher, and gospel singer from Northeast Tennessee. And this is Give Me Five, where we spend around five minutes every day looking into the Word of God, studying to see what it says, and we make the promise that it will be free of cliches, free of politics, free of charge, and free of any high-pressure manipulation. We're just looking to say what does the Word of God say about our lives, about Christ, about the church, and what is the Bible teaching us? And we're in the book of Colossians, chapter 1. We're reflecting this week on the phrase from verse 13, His dear Son. We have learned how that Jesus is the Redeemer, and that's whom we have redemption in, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God. We know that He is the Creator and the instrumental cause of creation. We know that He has preeminence and is the head of the church, and that it pleased the Father that in Jesus all the fullness of the Godhead dwells. We're at verse 19 now, and we see, For it pleased the Father that him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace, we're going to study some heavy stuff today and for a five-minute study, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated, listen to that, alienated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. What a glorious passage of scripture this is. The Bible says that Jesus has made peace. Peace only comes when there once was conflict. So here's what we have to understand about redemption. Here's what we have to understand about the cross of Christ. The conflict at the cross of Christ between a holy God, a sinless lamb, and the sin of the world, there was a conflict that was created by you and I, and you and I in our totally depraved state, in our unregenerate, unsaved state, are aliens and are enemies of God. The Bible says that he has made peace through the blood of his cross. Listen, it's all about the blood. When we sing, we sing so many songs about the blood of Jesus. Why? Because that's the only way that I don't have to go to hell. The only way that I escape the pits of a literal burning hell is because Jesus shed his blood on the cross. And the Bible says that he did that to reconcile that is to reconcile fully, to restore harmony. See, what has happened, God has made peace in Jesus Christ with us by accepting the blood of Jesus Christ for the debt that you and I owed. The redeemed on earth are just as, re as re reconciled as those in heaven. Redemption drew God to men. In other words, God had something against us. He had a debt that had to be paid. His holiness was offended. God was angry. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. This messes up some people's, oh, Jesus loves me theology. And yes, God does love. He does love. God is love. But, the, but how can you love and not be angry about some things? I love my children. Uh, but I can get angry real quick when I see them doing something that is harmful to them, or I can see one of them harming um, one another, or I can see someone from the outside harming them. You can't perfectly love without perfectly hating some things as well. And God hates sin. They're not little peccadillos. They're not tiny sins. They're not little white lies. They're not uh, little compromises. They're not mistakes. Sin offends a holy God. And if you're living in sin, you are an enemy of God. But redemption reconciles God to you. Reconciliation draws you to him. In other words, that breaks down that wall of hostility where, as we talked yesterday, you stepped off the throne of your own life, placed God upon the throne of your life, and you began to follow and do His will and are no longer hostile to the Word of God. I've never seen a time in my life uh, where people are more angry at Christians just for being Christians, just for being saved, just for saying they believe in the exclusivity of the blood of Jesus Christ. But it gets personal. It says in verse 21, And you that were sometimes alienated enemies. Alienated means that they're estranged. Enemies means actively hostile. You were actively hostile as you sinned in our minds, in your minds. The lost hate God, and many of them don't even know it. In the body of his flesh through death, that's the gospel. He has reconciled us. He has redeemed us in the body of his flesh by the shedding of his blood. And what does it say? That he might present us holy, 
That means, that's the Greek word hagios, that we might be set apart for sacred use. God didn't save you just to get you to heaven. He saved you to get other people to heaven. He saved you to use you to show forth his glory as one who had been once an enemy of God, but is now a redeemed child of God, unblameable, faultless, unblemished, and unreproachable, that God would have nothing to accuse of, that we would live a clean life. What a beautiful truth about his dear son. Thank you so much. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow for the end of the week.